Hey everyone, welcome to Mad Backyard. Today we're gonna show you how to make smoked ribeye steaks on a gas grill. So even if you don't own a smoker, you can still make some great smoked food right on your grill. We're gonna show you exactly how to set up your gas grill to smoke your steaks, then how to finish them on a blazing hot cast iron griddle for a steakhouse quality crust. Ribeye steaks are some of our favorite steaks for smoking because they have a lot of fat that runs through them. If it's within your budget, prime grade is best, but I found these really nice choice grade ribeyes at Walmart. So they don't have to be prime, just make sure they have plenty of marbling or fat running throughout them. I also like to look for steaks to smoke that are at least an inch thick. You don't want to try smoking thin, lean steaks because they can dry out and cook too fast during the smoking stage and they'll be overdone by the time you finish searing them. I like to season all sides of the steak with plenty of kosher salt and fresh cracked black pepper. I don't add any oil at this stage because I don't want anything blocking the smoke from getting to the meat. I also stay away from barbecue rubs, especially those with sugar in them, because the rubs can easily burn when we sear the steaks later on. Once you season the steaks, put them back in the refrigerator while you get your grill set up. This will help keep them nice and cold. Cold meat absorbs smoke better, and a cold steak will have more time to come up in temperature and absorb the most smoke flavor possible before we sear it. Set up your gas grill by opening up the valve on your propane tank, and then lighting only a single burner on one of the far sides to medium or high. Today's video is sponsored by Monument Grills. They sent us their Mesa Series 5 burner gas grill to try out, and that's what we're smoking and searing our steaks on today. So far, I've been really impressed with this grill. I like the clear view lid so you can see your food without having to open the lid and lose all your heat. I like the stainless steel construction and the heavy duty cast iron grill grates that come with it. And it's got a really easy electronic startup system. I appreciate that the inside is coated in enamel to make cleaning easier and help prevent rust. And it's really easy to pull out the grease tray from the back to clean the bottom out. So you don't need to remove all the grates and every other component. It just has a lot of really smart features. So if you're looking for a new gas grill, I'd recommend going with a specialty company like Monument rather than just settling for whatever mass produced models been sitting out in the parking lot at your local big box store for the last couple months. For a limited of time they're also giving our viewers a discount so you can use the promo code madbackyard at checkout that's one word madbackyard to instantly get five percent off your purchase use the link down in the description as well as that code to make sure you get the discount okay back to our steaks next we're going to fill up a smoker box with wood chips today i'm using these pecan wood chips because lately i've really enjoyed using pecan wood especially on beef it has a nice full rich flavor without overpowering the meat fill up the smoker box with wood chips close the lid and carefully place it over the lit burner then close the lid to your grill and wait for the box to start making smoke. This usually takes about 10 minutes. You don't need to soak the wood chips in water first as this will just delay the amount of time it takes for them to start creating smoke. The smoke doesn't come from moisture, but rather from heating the wood chips in the air restricted environment of the smoke box. This lack of airflow is also what keeps them from just igniting and catching fire so that they smoke and smolder instead. Once the smoker box is making smoke, put the ribeye steaks on the opposite side of the grill, preferably up on the top rack to keep them as far away from the heat source as possible. Turn the heat down on the burner to medium or as low as you can manage to keep it while keeping the smoker box smoking. We wanna keep the temperature inside the gas grill below 300 degrees. If you're having a hard time doing this, you can also put a water pan between the smoke box burner side and the ribeye steaks to help diffuse more of the heat getting to the steak. The goal is to bring the temperature of the steak up as slowly as possible so that it absorbs as much smoke flavor as possible before we sear it. Wearing a good pair of high heat barbecue gloves, you can give the smoker box a gentle shake every few minutes just to keep the wood chips smoking. Once the internal temperature of the steaks hits 90 degrees Fahrenheit, you can remove them from the grill and put them on a plate loosely tented with foil. Next, we're gonna turn the heat on the other side of our grill as high as it'll go. I'll be using the broil zone on this monument grill to get as much direct heat as possible. The nice thing about the broil zone on this grill is that it puts three burners very close together with the center one able to get exceptionally hot very quickly. By turning all the burners up to high and closing the lid on this grill, you can get the air temperature up to 620 degrees in less than 10 minutes. But I can get a cast iron griddle this hot in even less time by positioning it directly over the broil zone. I suggest using a cast iron pan like this if you want to get the best sear and crust possible on your steaks. While you certainly can cook the steaks directly over the flames, in my opinion, having full direct surface contact with searing hot cast iron will give you the best possible results. I also like to use an infrared thermometer to know exactly when the cast iron is as hot as I want it to be. We're aiming for a temperature between 550 and 650 degrees Fahrenheit. Then we're gonna use some Wagyu beef tallow to oil up our cast iron pan. If you watch our channel, you know I love using beef tallow to sear steaks, as I think you get the best possible flavor and the best crust on your steak compared to any other type of cooking fat or oil. Make sure to give the tallow a few minutes to get hot. 
I'll put links to the thermometer, this pan, and the tallow, and everything else we're using today down in the description if you want to check them out. Once the tallow's hot, gently place the steak on the cast iron and give it a little shake so it doesn't stick immediately. Make sure to have your instant read thermometer, tongs, and high heat barbecue gloves all ready to go because the steak will finish cooking quickly. Sear it about one to two minutes on each side, checking to make sure it's not burning and flipping once you have a nice dark brown crust on one side. Use your instant read thermometer to know when to take the steak off. You'll want to remove the steak about eight to 10 degrees before your final preferred doneness temperature as it'll continue rising after you remove it from the grill. For medium rare, you want a final doneness of 130 degrees, so remove the steak from the grill at about 120 degrees. For medium, you want a final doneness of 135 degrees, so remove the steak once it's closer to 125 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember, we're already starting at an internal temperature of about 90 degrees, so this won't take very long in a hot cast iron pan. If there's a lot of fat on the edges of the steaks, don't forget to turn them on their sides to help render some of this fat as well. Once the internal temperature is where you want it, remove it from the grill. I like to rest my steaks on a wire rack over a foil lined baking sheet rather than just on a plate or a cutting board. I find I maintain a better crust on the bottom of my steak while it rests. And I think it keeps the steak from continuing to rise too much in temperature by letting that heat escape from the bottom rather than getting trapped by a plate. Okay, we've let the steak rest for about five, six minutes now. We're gonna go ahead and slice into it. So what I really love about ribeye steaks is that you're basically getting a cross section of a prime rib. If you watched our prime rib or our ribeye roast videos, you know, you can think of that prime rib as just this, but uh, you know, a cross section. So you got the main part of the ribeye here. It's usually separated by some fat and then the spinalis part here. And now depending where they cut the steak from the prime rib, you're gonna get more or less of the spinalis. This is a great piece of meat right here. Um, it's kind of a prized piece of meat among people that geek out on this stuff like I do. So uh, I always look for a steak that has more of this uh, piece here on the side versus more of the center section. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut the uh, spinalis part off from the main part here. And then you can see we got this nice, I don't know if you can hear that on my microphone, over all the birds. <laughs> you got a nice uh, crust on the outside there from uh, searing it in that cast iron pan. So we got the grain of the steak running this way. We're just gonna cut right through there and kind of see how we did here. So I like my ribeye medium. And when you first slice into a steak, you may think you overcooked it, but actually the longer that the steak sits out, uh, exposed to air from the center, the redder it gets. You can almost see it getting pink right as I'm talking here. So if we let this sit for maybe another minute or so, it's gonna look a lot more pink in the middle, a lot more medium. So a lot of people cut into their steaks, you know, thinking that they've overdone it or they take them off the grill too soon because they cut into them while they're cooking and it looks like they're done, but they're really still rare. So make sure you give that steak a minute uh, to kind of come, you know, come to the, the color that you're expecting from cooking it to a medium level. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and give this a try and see how we did. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Mm. So juicy and tender, you get a nice hint of smoke from that pecan wood we used. And then that crust, you can't beat doing a hot sear in a cast iron pan. I'm telling you, it's the way to go when you want to get a really good sear on your steaks. Spinalis part of the ribeye runs a little more like this as far as the grain goes. So we're going to go ahead and slice just like that. So we'll make sure we're cutting against the grain. Let's go ahead and give this a try. That cap on the ribeye steak just melts in your mouth, especially when cooked to a medium, medium rare. Just delicious. We hope you enjoyed this video. You can get the full step-by-step -step recipe at madbackyard.com. I'll put a link to it down in the description below. And if you wanna check out the Monument Grill we used in today's video, make sure to click the link below and use promo code MADBACKYARD, that's one word, to get a special discount. I'll also put links to all the other products we used today down in the description as well if you wanna try them out. Thanks for watching.